In this video, we're going to talk about CNC programming. Uh, first, I'm going to go through a lecture that goes over some of the basics, and then we're going to do a demo uh, or a couple of demos with the uh, routed mini part, uh, as well as uh, an example that goes over uh, the CNC mill part uh, from, from my assembly. Okay, um, so all right, let's get right to it. Um, so what is CNC? CNC stands for Computer Numer Numeric Control. Okay, um, and you know, uh, you doing it with CNC allows you to have more repeatability. Um, it isn't necessarily more accurate, um, but uh, it is repeatably more accurate and usually much faster. Okay, um, so usually when you make uh, your CAM program, um, you, you make your G code. Um, you don't do it by hand, although some people do. Um, for us, however, we're going to be making this uh, code with uh, a CAM software. Okay, and that stands for computed aided computer aided machining. Okay, um, so yeah, we'll create the G code. Uh, what is G code? You might ask. Uh, funny enough, when I was an undergrad, I had some buddies that uh, tried to convince me it was the code of the streets, which is definitely not the case. Okay, but basically it is the path that, uh, that explains to uh, the machine uh, where to move in order to cut out your part, okay? Um, so yeah, we use uh, Mastercam Fusion or HSM Works uh, usually to create a tool path. Um, we're gonna be dealing with HSM Works primarily, uh, although HSM Works is almost exactly the same as Fusion. So once you learn HSM Works, you should be able to do it in Fusion uh, as well. So going over some of the basics of G-code, um, you have your G00, G01, G02, and G03. Okay, so a G00 is a, uh, a rapid movement. So that's when it, you know, sort of jogs around quickly to move itself from one area to the part of, to the other. Uh, a G00 is never used to, uh, to cut or it should never be used to cut because uh, the G00 goes at like basically the full speed that the machine can handle. Okay, a G01 is a normal speed linear movement. So it's a straight line and it can be X, Y, or Z. So it can be a diagonal uh, and it can move in the X, Y, uh, and Z directions all simultaneously or individually uh, if needed. Okay, um, and then you have G02s and G03s and these are uh, circular paths. Okay, and again, you, you're given uh, where the arc goes from and to uh, in your X, Y, and Z. And you're also given an I and J. Okay, and the I and J gives you the X Y displacement um, from uh, uh, sorry the X Y displacement of the center point of the arc from your initial starting point. Okay, so yeah, uh, it also has X Y and Z, but it also gives you the center point of of the arc. Some other G codes. Um, so you have your G tens, which are sort of your work offset planes. Okay, G20s specify your units. Um, some G30s are for threading. Um, G40s are for your tool offsets usually. Uh, although on the Haas machine, it usually calls it out in an H offset for uh, your particular tool height. Um, your G50s uh, are your work coordinate systems. Okay, so we'll talk a little bit more about what those are gonna mean, uh, you know, later on when we do our, pres our, our uh, when I do the demonstration part of this. Um, but yeah, those basically show where our XYZ origin is that we uh, correspond with the cam and the, the actual part, okay? Uh, you have your G60s, which are coordinate system rotations. So if you need to perform a, uh, a rotation or an operation, um, you have G70s, which are a lot of turning and facing. So this is all uh, stuff you would do on the lathe. You would normally not see uh, any, uh, uh, you know, a G70s for, for, you know, turning and facing on, on the mill. But um, some G70s are used for fine boring operations on the mill. Okay, uh, and then your G80s are your canned drill cycles. Okay, so uh, those can be kind of handy. Uh, you could say a G80, uh, you could call it a G80 and then just give a bunch of uh, specified locations and, and it'll take it, it'll take the drill and drill it in s several locations and you don't need to specify how high up or down you need to go because uh, that will be kind of all built into your G80s. Okay, um, so yeah, those are some of the basics. Uh, I don't have every single one of these memorized, um, but it is important that you gener generally understand what uh, certain G codes do, uh, or at least know how to look them up so that you could see um, if you have any problem with your G code, you could sort of go in and, and investigate what it's actually doing. Okay, so again, um, 
We're not going to do things by hand mostly, um, but I can show you, um, you know, basically this is the code, okay, that is spat out from when we make it on a CAM program, okay? And again, you can use HSM Works, Mastercam Fusion, and so many others. I think RhinoCam is what they primarily use over at Tyler. Um, but yeah, basically what it looks like in the CAM model uh, is, you know, you have a representation of your tool as well as the blue path that, um, that that tool goes through, okay? So the blue path here represents the center line of the tool on the very bottom. So like kind of at the bottom tip of the tool, all right? And it shows basically how it moves around. Your blue lines are uh, gonna be your G01 stuff or basically your main cutting path. And your your uh, yellow lines here are gonna be um, your, your jogging or, you know, your rapid movements uh, and your, your green lines are going to be how it leads into the part, you know, as it initiates the cut. Okay. Um, so let's go over some of the general camming features that we have. Um, as you can see here, I have a couple of paths, but um, we usually want to think in terms of roughing and finishing. Okay. So you, any surface that you want to machine, you you should try and uh, do a roughing pass and then a finishing pass, okay? And that's really helpful, um, you know, so that you could get a better finish and you know even achieve higher tolerancing uh, potentially. Um, so so yeah, let's talk a little bit about that. You have adaptive clearing and you have pocket clearing. Uh, adaptive clearing is you know when you want to clear external geometries, as you can see in the second picture there. Um, the adaptive is sort of like on the top uh, doing the outside perimeter of that little uh, cylinder that's sort of sticking out of the top. All right, and then in the left-hand side, you have a pocket clearing, uh, which is sort of doing an internal geometry. It's kind of hard to tell from this picture, I guess, but uh, those, uh, you know, sort of half circle grooves that I've cut that are sort of uh, black where the where the blue line is, obviously, those are some like kind of internal pocket geometries um, where I would, you know, want to use a pocket clearing. OK, and these are kind of intuitive. You basically can uh, can click various surfaces and it will sort of figure out what you what it thinks you want it to do. Um, and it and it usually does a, a pretty good job with like sort of minimal effort in terms of telling it exactly what to do. Next, um, so you have contours. Okay, so you have uh, 2D contours and 3D contours. Um, so I am using uh, the same part here to sort of illustrate uh, sort of different examples. But if you notice, we have the, um, the, the path on the left, that is a 3D contour. OK, so that's done with a ball end mill. OK, so believe it or not, even when the the path is like all the way at its lowermost point, it's only ever going to be engaging on the little fillet that is on the on the top of the part right here where my mouse is. So the little fillet here is what is getting machined by this 3D contour that I have selected. OK, and again, even though the path goes all the way down, it looks like to the surface of, of the material there or that, you know, this sort of flat surface of the material, the tool will only be engaging with that little fillet. OK, and again, that's because it's on a ball mill uh, and, you know, it doesn't always engage right on the tip, depending on uh, how, how it's machining. OK, and then if you compare that to uh, the, the path on the right hand side, that is a 2D contour. OK, so 2D contour should be reserved for kind of vertical sides. So you see, in addition to the fillet geometry on the top, you have the uh, vertical side walls on, on the you know, on the sides of that cylinder. OK, and again, you usually want to do a 2D contour uh, for, for that sort of path. OK, uh, and that usually works good because you can build in finishing passes into the 2D contour where you can't necessarily do that with the 3D. Um, but yeah, again, we'll go over that all with the demonstration. OK, so um, so those so we, we went over some some roughing paths with the the, the pocket and and the uh, and, and the um, and the adaptive clear. Um, but now we could talk a little bit more and, and the contour stuff was was a lot of the finishing path uh, stuff as well. But some more finishing path uh, operations you could have can be uh, sort of in, in the realm of, of facing or surface finishing. OK, so let's talk a little bit about the difference. OK, so you have horizontal facing 
uh, and parallel serp, uh, and parallel um, operations that you can perform. Okay, so best way to describe it: if you have a horizontal, usually I reserve that for a planar surface that is um, flat, or you know, or has good parallelism with the x y plane of the machine. Okay, but the horizontal might have certain protruding elements. Okay, so if you look at the picture on the right-hand side, whoops, sorry. If you look at the picture on the right-hand side, you'll see it, you know, when, when I click that top surface, it ignored or it knew how to deal with basically the little uh, cylindrical piece that's sort of sticking out. Okay, so if I had a, uh, yeah, so if I had like a more or less flat surface with like protruding elements, uh, that's like a good application for a horizontal operation. Okay, um, if you look at a planar surface or even a non-planar surface, it could be curved as well. Uh, but, you know, uh, a surface that is not parallel or yeah, it doesn't have parallelism with the X and Y axes of the machine uh, and or it can be curved as well. That's where you'll want to use a parallel. OK, so you can see on this part here, there's like this little wedge that I needed to machine. OK, and I used a ball end mill on that whenever a, a surface is non uh, not parallel with your X Y plane of the machine. Uh, that's when you'll you'll want to use a, a, a ball end mill, even if it doesn't have um, uh, e even if it's non-curved, okay? So even if it is like flat, uh, as long if it's not parallel with uh, uh, and your X, Y plane of the machine, uh, then you'll need to use a ball end mill, okay? But again, that's a finishing path uh, with, with uh, th that you might want to use, okay? Uh, next, we'll talk about facing. Okay, so facing, um, it, it doesn't necessarily know any of the uh, protruding or, um, you know, cut geometry. All right. So as you can see with the disc here on the left hand side, the, the path goes over the top of the material and it sort of ignores all of the cutouts and holes in, in geometry that I've put there. OK, so sometimes when you first start out with a piece of material, you might want to face it down to a certain height and then you might want to cut all those uh, geometries into it. OK, so facing is is uh, is helpful if you want to get the entirety of a surface flat, maybe even before you do other machining operations. OK, next, uh, talk about turning and facing. Again, we're not going to really um mess too much with uh the cnc lathe okay but um this is what a path would look like um and really a lot of times on a lathe it's kind of even more simple um so there's threading paths um but it, you know generally if you have like a a, 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 a you know a cylindrical profile you really only need to do a a, a mill or a, sorry a, a, a turn face operation and it can both turn and face uh your your part here as you can see with this um, with this guy here, I have uh, I have it doing a couple of roughing passes, and then it finally does one uh, finish pass that hugs the material and goes all the way all the way around the sides and everything. Okay. Um, now I talked a little bit during mill training about uh, your feed and speeds. Okay. Now what you can do is you could actually look up certain feeds and speeds and calculate what your spindle speed and our and and uh, and feed rate should be okay so um yeah let's talk about speed and feed calculations for the mill okay so you might want to look up a certain service feed range for a uh, desired tool and material okay so in our case aluminum uh, you could say that can be anywhere from 400 to 1000 service feet per minute okay and that's just according to a certain publication certain tools will also recommend um, you know, a certain service feed, okay? And if a manufacturer recommends a certain service feed, that's probably more reliable than what you might find online, especially if what you find online uh, goes over a very large range, which is which um, which is the case in this example, okay? Um, you'll also select a certain tool that you want. So again, tool and material combination will probably give you a certain service feed, uh, um, a sur service feed range. And again, usually your service feed is not necessarily dependent on the end mill size, but the end mill material, okay? Um, however, the feed per tooth is, is dependent on material uh, of, of material that you're cutting, material of the tool, and the diameter of the tool, okay? So you look up your recommended uh, service feed, you look up your recommended um, uh, 
uh, feed per tooth and, and those feed into later calculations. Okay, so first thing you normally wanna calculate is your spindle speed, okay? So again, you have your service feed per minute uh, times pi over 12 over two pi. Again, you're converting uh, feet to two inches sort of thing. Um, and basically um, you, you're able to get your, it's able to spit out a, a, a surface feed. So your spindle speed is equal to surface feed per minute times uh, 12 over pi um, over D, okay, or diameter of your tool. All right. Um, so yeah, next what you would find uh, would be your feed rate. Okay, so again, this is dependent on your feed per tooth, which you've looked up, okay? And um, and also the number of flutes that are on that particular tool, all right? So again, your feed rate is your spindle speed, which you've calculated from before, times the given feed per tooth, times the number of, number of flutes, okay? And that'll give you your feed rate in inches per minute, okay? Now, um, it might be the case that you are only engaging a portion of the, the tool's uh, diameter or radius at a time, okay? So if I'm using the full diameter, that's when I wanna keep to the feed rate that I calculated with the equation in step five, okay? But if I'm engaging less of the tool, then I can use this chart on the right-hand side here, sorry, on the right-hand side over here, um, which allows me to um, to figure out how much faster I could go depending on how what percentage of the tool's diameter I'm actually using, okay? So, uh, you know, if I'm using only 5%, then I could really increase my feed rate, uh, you know, greater than um, what, what I would normally use, okay? And then uh, you select the depth of cut, um, Usually, uh, this is less than half of, of its diameter. So, um, you know, but normally I, I don't really go much more than uh, 50,000 steps if I'm using the full uh, diameter, if I'm engaging the full diameter as I cut. Um, and again, certain tool manufacturers will give you a sort of chip load or material removed per uh, a given amount of time. So you could use that value to tune uh, the depth that you're cutting with your feed rate. So you could basically figure out uh, the swept volume uh, of, your, of your tool as it cuts to figure out uh, how much you know, depth you could actually afford to use uh, with that particular tool um, with given specifications. Okay, so now um, that concludes our presentation portion and I will go over to our examples. Now what we're going to go over is the um, uh, the mini part that you guys are gonna do on the CNC router. Uh, so I'm gonna be going over how to um, machine this and um, what was that? And uh, I'm not gonna go over too much of how to model it. I'll just briefly sort of run through it, but started out with the with the square, cut the little well in it, and then basically just filleted both sides. okay? Um, so now I'll I'm, what I'm I'll delete this coordinate system really quick. Now what we're gonna do is um, uh, start our start what we need to do for the tool path. okay So now the model is complete. I can hide my sketches if I want to. Um, but yeah, that all looks very good as far as the model is concerned. All right, so starting um, with what you need to do to prepare for tool pathing. So what I'm gonna do is go up to reference geometry here. So over in the features tab, I'm gonna go do the drop down from reference geometry. And I'm gonna do coordinate system. Um, all right, so now I can select uh, various places to put this coordinate system. And I could choose several places if I wanted to. Um, you know, I could uh, change the location of this vertex. I could make it, yeah, several locations. I could I could place it, you know, kind of wherever I want. Um, now, as far as the router is concerned, um, I usually want the coordinate system to be on the very bottom. So how do you know what's the top and what's the bottom when it comes to machining? Well, um, our tools can only come down from over top of the material, okay? So um, yeah, if this were positioned the other way around, like if this side was facing up, if this side was facing up like that, um, then the tool uh, would not obviously be able to get the cavity because it, it can't bend around or it, you know, we don't have a fifth axis, so I can't rotate the part around it like that, okay? So, whoops. So the part, so the, the part will always need to be up in the direction the, the tool can come from over, over top. All right, um, and we designate the top as the uh, direction that the Z is going in. Okay, so let's reorient our coordinate system. For the router, I always want it 
um, on the bottom face, like I mentioned. And then usually I put it in the lower left-hand corner, which means um, all of the part, you know, dimensions are in are in sort of the positive uh, quadrant um, for for that for that little x y z triad. Okay, so I'm gonna make my x go along that direction. Oops, not that. So let's go there. I want x to go there. Okay, cool. And I want y to go there, um, but I want the y to go the other way. Okay, cool. So so I have the y along that direction, the x along that direction, and then the z has has is pointed up. Okay, so that's appropriate. So again, the direction the arrows are pointed is the positive direction. So the part exists in the positive, um, yeah, in the positive regime, let's call it. Um, and that's all we're going to do with the coordinate system. So we'll click check there. And now what I'm going to do is uh, make our job. So let's tab ourselves over all the way to the right hand side. So I could go to this camp manager. I've, I've made a couple of jobs so far, but we'll make a new one. So go down, do the drop down from job. Uh, yeah, so if we notice here, the type of machining we're doing is milling. I could choose to do mill turn, but obviously this part uh, is not going to be suited to, to put on a lathe. Okay, so I'm going to keep it milling. Now we select our model, and um, basically the selection is going to give you the name of like whatever the last like thing you did to it. So it's calling it fillet two. It, it is doing it for the whole model, but the fillet was like kind of the last thing we did to it. Now, as far as the stock goes, there's some options we could do here. For a lot of oper operations, you can just get away with doing a relative box size. But what we're actually going to do is go here to fixed box size. Okay, and we're going to add stock in the Z direction. So we're going to make this 0.71. Okay, the material is ever so slightly higher uh, than uh, than the part here. So we need to represent it as a little bit bigger. And instead of centered on the Z axis, we're going to do offset from bottom. Okay, and then you could specify the amount that we offset it from the bottom. And we're just going to specify that amount to be zero. Okay, so basically it's telling it that there's nothing, we're not, we're not going to have any stock underneath it. So, um, you know, any additional stock put above it. That's that's sort of what we're trying to get it to do there. Okay. Um, yeah, and again, a lot of times you can do just a fixed, uh, just a relative box size with no additional stock. Um, and I could actually, in this case, I could add stock to all sides. Um, yeah, I don't really need to add it to the sides because of the operations that we plan to do to the side walls of the material. Um, whoops, that's way too small, 1.5. Uh, so we're just going to leave it no stock, no additional stock on the sides. Uh, you know, so I'll leave the width and the depth to be the, the same as what my, my part is, which is 1.5 by 1.5. Okay. Um, now we'll scroll down and I like to ensure that it's using the coordinate system that we had just selected. So doing coordinate system one. Okay. Um, and yeah, we're not going to do any work offsets or anything fancy like that. Uh, we're just going to keep it with a little extra stock on the top and using coordinate system one. And that should be all we really need to do for the job. So we've created this job three here. So now the first thing I'm going to do again is I'm going to try and think I want to rough something out and then finish it. Okay. Um, so, so yeah, let's take a look uh, and let's go to 3D milling and go to pocket clearing. Okay. And for this one, uh, well, actually, first, we'll talk about these tabs here. So I opened up my pocket. So I did the 3D pocket. Uh, and what I'm going to do first is select the tool. So on the first tab here, it asks us to select tools. So I'm going to use, um, let's actually delete these so I could show you where they come from. Delete and delete. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, select a tool. So I'll show you where they all come from. So you could do the drop down from by type. Go to flat mill. OK, so you can see there are, uh, you know, lots of different mill, flat mills that they have here. Uh, so we'll go down to quarter inch. And you notice on each size, there are multiple flat mill. Um, yeah, there are multiple flat mill options. OK, so what we what 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 you want to realize on those is they give you different material presets or kind of suggestions. Okay, so it gives you a spindle speed um, and, and and a feed rate um, recommendation for these various materials. So this is the aluminum one. You have a brass one, bronze, copper, high speed, high carbon, low carbon steel. Um, 
and you got some plastics, uh, you know, stainless and titanium. Okay. Uh, if you're not certain which is the right to use, it's, you know, it's fine to be a little bit more conservative and, and use the speed and feed for a, um, a, a harder material. Okay. Um, we could use the plastics here. Um, I'm going to keep it on the aluminum preset. Uh, we're going to be doing this out of MDF. Um, it's kind of a small part, so I don't want it to get knocked off uh, of the tape, which is going to be holding it down to the material um, or be holding it down to the spillboard. So yeah, we'll just go with the aluminum presets and we'll select it. Okay, now uh, we're going to modify it slightly. We're going to keep it at the same RPM, but we're just going to modify only the blue feed rate, only the cutting feed rate to 100 inches a minute. And the lead ins and lead outs, I'm actually going to bring down to 30 inches a minute for, for both of those. And I'm going to make the plunge feed rate 10. Okay, so I'll go over what I just did. So keeping it to 1,000 RPM, uh, I increase my cutting feed rate to 100 inches a minute. Okay, as you can see, it gives you what surface feed that that is. Okay, so uh, again, you know, that that 654 might actually be appropriate for aluminum. You, you could actually probably cut certain aluminums with that, with, with certain tools, depending on what you're doing. Um, so, yeah, it spits out a service speed, uh, which is, you know, we went over that in the lecture. And usually you have a recommended service uh, speed, um, you know, which you can match up by fiddling with your uh, with your spindle speed. Uh, yeah, with your spindle speed and, and, and tool diameter. OK, um, yeah. And again, it gives you the feed per tooth as well. So you can match that up, you know, so you can modify your cutting feed rate so that your feed per tooth um, is, is accurate. OK. Um, all right. Great. Um, so we look at the feed per revolution and it's 0 0.001. Um, another thing to keep in mind, actually, should have probably mentioned this. Um, so if you if, if it gives you this feed per tooth um, and if we go to the library, um, we could go to edit the tool, okay? And it shows you all the different cutter geometries and, and everything like that. Um, and then I could even tell it, uh, I think I could tell it the, uh, the number of flutes. Uh, okay, so the holder, holder geometry. Yeah, so I could I could modify a lot of the geometries and feeds and speeds from here if I, if I really wanted to. I could change like the preset values uh, to be, you know, to better suit what I'm what I'm doing, uh, but I could change a lot of parameters about about the tool, um, you know, by by modifying by modifying it over here. Okay, um, but yeah, we won't uh, we won't mess with that too much for now. We'll we'll keep that to to what it actually is. Uh, so I'm going to say no. I don't want to override anything, and we'll select that. Okay, cool. So it's kept it with my modifications uh, that I that I made here. Okay, and that's good. All right. So next we'll go to the second tab over finally. OK, um, now this is your machining boundary. So this is kind of telling it where you want it to cut. All right. Now I'm going to just select the inner profile there. You know, that's all I'm going to really do for this pocket clearing. OK, um, so let's go to the third profile now. Oh, well, yeah, let's go over some stuff. So um, I could tell it to do a silhouette, which, uh, as you can see, I when I select that, I don't have a selection box to tell it where I want it to cut. And basically it just sort of, uh, when you say silhouette, you're asking it to sort of figure it out itself. Um, so yeah, that's like unconstrained, like, you know, just do the whole thing uh, however you think, it, or however the, the computer thinks is, is the best way to do it. Um, so yeah, again, I'm gonna do the drop down for selection. I'm gonna select that face and that should be good. Okay, so now third tab over. Um, these are your retract and like kind of clearance heights. Okay, so um, if you say wanted to, like let's say you wanted to do a 3D contour, um, you know, which I could show you a little bit later, but I could do a 3D contour on just this fillet by modifying my bottom height. So I can, you know, so basically the machining bottom is where, is how far you want to like bring the tool down as it's cutting. Okay, so I could change it to where I have this bottom be up a little bit. Well, that's too far. So if I make it like 0.5 inches up, okay, you could see it stops basically at the fillet. All right. So that's probably where we're going to 
put the fillet or somewhere there or thereabouts so that we could fully machine uh fully machine fully machine that fillet and and it would ignore uh those sides there that that I would cut with another path okay um and yeah you you could do that to like save time and things like that um but yeah for now We'll leave that at zero. We don't really need to modify anything for this. Um, you also have retract height. So this is the height that it, it brings it all the way to, um, uh, you know, as it as it jogs itself around. Sometimes, um, oh, yeah, we don't want that. We want retract height from top, okay? And, and, and the top we're declaring from the stock top, uh, which is, you know, uh, what we specified in the job. Okay. And again, I could change these parameters. I could make it from different places if I wanted to. But yeah, you're basically messing with all your clearance heights and everything. Okay. Fourth tab over. Um, this kind of tells it, uh, this is kind of where you will set up how much chip load uh well not not necessarily chip load but this is where you set up how much um you know how deep you're cutting and what your step overs are <clears throat> and everything like that okay so um right now um it's going down it, it, it's it's step down will be 0 0.04 inches at a time since we're doing wood i i could go a lot more than that so i'm going to make it 0.1 okay just so that it speeds things up um now your your stock to leave is an important uh, feature as well. So I plan to make this my roughing cut for, for all these faces. And so I'm gonna leave 20 thou on both the bottom. So this is what to leave on the bottom and this is what to leave on the sides. Okay, you can see sort of what it's doing there. If you hover over a lot of this stuff, it gives you a better indication of, of like what it's doing, okay? Now your, your milling direction, uh, climb conventional both ways. We're actually gonna do both ways in this case, um, just because we plan to finish this uh, and we could, on our finish pass, we could specify climb mill, which is, you know, usually what you wanna do with, with your finish passes. Um, but, um, you know, it, uh, yeah, it, it um, It'll it'll be it'll save time to do both ways in this. We don't have to to just do it, um, you know, in one direction, uh, and then it would have to like move itself around a lot. So yeah, generally better, uh, you know, better to do it both ways if you're if you're roughing because it'll be faster. Okay, so now we're gonna put smoothing and feed optimization on, um, and we're gonna unclick the only inner corners portion here. So. What, are the, what does the smoothing and feed optimization do? So uh, the smoothing, I think it gives you a kind of handy little graphic here, um, but basically uh, it creates less points um, that that, um, that that go through the path. So this is especially you know prevalent if you have like a curved path. Um, it'll sort of make less points so that uh, it you know jerks around a little bit less because it'll go to a point, go to a point, go to a point, but it might actually act as a smoother curve uh, if you create less points, uh, you know, create less points on that curve, okay? Um, and the feed optimization here is kind of handy. Um, basically, you need to, um, you know, as you're, you know, going around a corner in a car, let's say, um, you need to slow down usually before you get to that corner, depending on the, the radius of the corner. Um, but, um, you know, and, and with machining, it, it needs to do the same thing. Okay, so, you know, as I'm moving straight in one direction, it'll become kind of difficult for the machine to totally stop itself and, and go in the other direction in, in like a really fast motion. Okay, so the feed optimization tells it, all right, before you get to that corner, put the brakes on and, you know, so that it can make that arc, arc you know, with a little bit less struggle, okay? And we want it on the inside and the outside because, uh, you know, if you jerk around a corner, you might end up getting some like little uh, ridges that you, that you don't necessarily want, okay? On the fifth tab over here, we're going to, yeah, we have your lead ins and lead outs, um, you know, so basically this is specifying how it's like entering the material and sort of leaving the material. Um, so yeah, lead in and lead out. Um, you know, if you remember from mill training, we always started with the end mill decidedly off of the part before we cut through it. Okay. And you never, ever stop on the part for any reason. And that's why, you know, you don't go into the part dwell on it and, and move, you know, you'll, you'll end up with blemishes and things like that. Okay. But, um, you know, uh, with the CNC, it doesn't necessarily start away from it and then move towards it. Um, in, in the same way that we do it with the, uh, with the manual mill, what it'll do is come down kind of next to it and then arc 
in on like a, a radial tool path um, into the sides. Okay, and and you'll see sort of what what's happening there um, when uh, when we post the process. Okay. So yeah, that looks like it's all fine. Um, you know what actually I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take out the helix. So the helix is another way it enters the material. So it'll sort of go down a, in a gradual spiral, okay? And I could change the angle of the spiral to make it go quicker or you know uh, have a higher pitch so it goes down more um, as, as it's rotating, okay? And um, something I should draw your attention to is you have lead in and lead out and ramping here. If we go all the way back to the first tab, you can see your lead in and lead out and ramp and, and your plunge feed rates, okay? So, that is what it, you know, that is what it's doing. That's what you're sort of modifying here. You're modifying the lead in and lead out um, sort of geometry. You can see hopefully in that little icon there, you have those green paths that sort of represent how it leads in and leads out. And again, uh, on the first tab, you could specify their speeds. Okay, so let's hit check and sort of see how it's going. Uh, so it says our safe distance. Um, I've exceeded the maximum step down. I know I haven't. I know it'll be just fine. So we're going to ignore the warning. Click yes. Okay, cool. So uh, so that's looking pretty good. Oh, did I forget to take off the helix? Yeah, so sorry. Going back really quick. Going to take off the helix and make it a plunge. Okay, so you saw that spiral there really j just briefly right before. Uh, so now, okay, I'll ignore that again. Now the spiral is off, right? So it just kind of comes straight down, and that'll be a little bit quicker. Usually, you only need to use the helix when you're uh, when you're doing metals and things like that. Okay, so the pocket is is next. All right, let's refresh my memory. Okay, so next we're going to do the horizontal. Okay, so now after the pocket is completed, we're going to go about um, uh, doing what we you know sort of said we were going to do before. So roughing and finishing. So now we're going to go about. Finishing the internal geometries here, uh, and also finishing this top lip up there. Okay, so all right, so let's do for that. We're going to do a horizontal. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go to horizontal, and again, this is a surface that has like kind of other protruding features around it. Like you know, it's we're doing this surface, and there's other stuff around it. So I wouldn't want to do a facing operation here. Um, a horizontal is probably going to be most appropriate. Okay. And as you can see, we have, uh, it selects the tool that we have from before. So I'm not going to mess with any of that. Um, right now we're going to select that bottom face. Okay. Now, uh, we're going to jump back and forth and sort of see what it does. Okay. So let's check if that does what, it, what we want it to do. All right. So as you can see, the path goes down in the well there and it goes up above the part here as well. Um, we actually want it to go up above the part um, so that I can finish this part up there. Um, now, um, obviously we're finishing that down there and we want to finish that up there, but you might say, well, we haven't really roughed that out. So why would you want to finish it if you haven't roughed it? Well, the material that we buy is going to be, again, like 0.715 or 0.71 inches, which is conveniently in the window where we can go right to doing a single pass and just do a finish pass. You know, there really wouldn't be anything to rough out if we only have just a little bit of material up there. So I'm kind of uh, technically cheating and um, and allowing it to do uh, the, the top surface up there without, you know, roughing it out. Although there isn't a whole lot of material, there would be no material to rough out anyways, uh, and we only have around 10, 15 thousandths uh, of stock above above our, our part surface, okay? So we'll go back to horizontal and we'll edit that out. Now, if I didn't want it to go up above there, um, I could modify on the third tab over. So one of the reasons it's going up there is because I have tool outside boundary selected, okay? Um, but I could you know, change that down here and make it go inside, or I could also go down here and, and change my uh, my top here to be uh, minus, well, let's do minus 0.1, okay? And that brings it just below the surface. And if we experiment with that, we can see it only does the middle middle portion there. But uh, but again, we wanted to do the top, uh, but that was just a, a, an example of how it would avoid uh, you could uh, make it avoid doing the top. Okay, so again, putting uh, the top uh, right on the top of the stock top. <laughs> um, so anyways, 
And then the fourth tab over, um, this is where uh, we're going to modify something. So we're going to keep most of the stuff up here the same. The step over is all fine. It should all be fine. Uh, we're going to keep it to climb milling so that it's you know going to be a finished pass. Um, but under stock to leave, um, I'm going to actually leave some on the sides, but then none on the bottom. Okay, so the default parameters here are fine. Leaving 20,000 on the side and, and, and surround the bottom. I, I could choose to finish both this, these sidewalls that I'm hovering over, like the, these sidewalls, as well as the bottom with this horizontal. But I'm just going to give you a couple examples of how you could finish the side separately from, from that bottom, okay? Although, I, again, I could have it finish all of the geometries of the, of the well inside here, as well as this flat lip up on top, okay? But we're going to leave stock just so I could show you some extra stuff. Now, um, uh, I'm going to leave in the lead-ins and lead-outs, but I'm going to change the helix to a to a plunge, okay? And that's gonna be pretty much all I do on the horizontal. Okay, so great, it's going up above, it's gonna mill all that so that that's nice and flat and it's gonna do the internal geometry there, but we need to do these sidewalls that go, that are like vertically facing, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to 2D um, and do, the two, do a 2D contour, okay? Uh, so 2D contours, uh, so again, keeping with the same speeds and feeds that we used from before, um, I could go to the second tab over and I could modify or I could tell it which uh, which entities I wanted to machine. So with a 2D, so with 3D stuff, I selected those faces, right? Um, but with 2D stuff, usually I select an edge or like a, a 2D entity and I could even select a sketch line if I wanted to, okay? So I'm going to select that, okay, now... I will say um, 2D operations are a little bit stupid sometimes. Okay, I mean that in the best way, but basically we've told it that line and it doesn't intuitively know on which side of that line we want it to machine, okay? So what you need to do is make sure that arrow there is in the void space, okay? So right now that arrow is like in the part material where, where I actually want the part. So it'll cut on the outside of, of that edge, okay, and, and that is not preferred, okay, so I want to go here, I could select, you know, in, in this, uh, in this window here where I have the, the edge one selected, I could click reverse, okay, and as you can see now, it brings the arrow to the inside, all right, and that should be good on that one, not going to change anything on the third tab over, um, I'm actually also not going to change anything on the fourth tab over, I could have it do multiple depths, multiple finishing passes and things like that, uh, but we're not going to mess with any of that for this one. Okay. Lead ins and lead outs, we're gonna we're gonna leave exactly the same. That should all be just fine. Okay. So clicking check on that, and you can see it's gonna just finish up those sides and just go around in one path. Okay. Okay, so I guess, yeah, we can just go ahead and get started. The next step we're going to do is we're going to attempt to rough out um, this radius or this fillet on the top here. Okay, so we've uh, we've completed a lot of the internal geometry and even this little lip on top. Now we'll start doing the outer stuff. Okay, so um, should be mentioned normally with an exterior contour like that, <clears throat> It'll, well, sometimes it'll be worth it to do an adaptive clearing, okay? Um, in this case, there really isn't a whole lot of excess stock above it or, you know, on, you know, uh, in this area. Um, so I'm really simply just going to uh, do a 2D, con or sorry, a 3D contour on it that will rough out that, um, that surface, okay? So I'm going to go here. I'm going to do 3D contour, okay? And I'm actually going to keep my quarter inch flat, um, but we're going to make sure that we leave some stock. So let's uh, select the faces. Again, we're going to keep the quarter flat the same as it was before. Let's just make sure. Yep. Looking good. Looking like I, uh, the, they're what I kept them. Okay, cool. So I selected all the top filleted surfaces. Third tab over. I'm not going to do anything. Uh, the fourth tab over... We're going to leave stock. We're going to leave 0 0.02 on the tops, you know, sort of above and, and to the side. Um, 
And then we're going to uh, make this go down in 0.1 inch increments. Okay, because we're just trying to rough it out. Really, all I need is like kind of two laps, uh, just roughing it out so that the ball mill has a little bit of an easier time. And of course, we'll make sure we put on smoothing and feed optimization. And we'll take off only in our corners. And yep, yeah, cool. All right, let's check out what that's doing. Come on, check mark. There we go. All right, cool. Yep. So only two laps. That's all I really needed to do. Oh, and uh, it looks like we forgot to to take out uh, the, the the spiral. So let's try and do that. So let's edit that. Um, or the helix, I should say. Um, oh, transition method, straight line. Is it doing that? It won't let me edit that. Okay. Anyways, we're gonna call that good. Okay. Um, and now what we're gonna do is actually go back. I want to make sure I just quickly make sure feed optimization and smoothing are on. Here we go. Good. Let's make sure those are on on our previous paths. Okay. And let's also make sure the horizontal has that as well. Just try, usually try to make sure those are all on. Oh, on this tab. There we go. Forgot it on those as well. Okay, cool. Excellent. So just double checking that all the smoothing and feed optimizations were on. Okay, cool. So we confirmed that the smoothing and feed optimizations were on for the previous two paths, and um, we quickly made uh, a roughing contour uh, that'll go around uh, the top surface there. Okay, great. So now um, that's good. Now what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to fully machine that with our uh, quarter inch ball. Okay, so. What I can do uh, is relatively quickly, I could control C, control V, the pass, um, and that'll at least get us close, kind of, you know, means that we don't have to reselect the contour. All right, but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here and I'm going to select, uh, yeah, I'm actually going to delete that. I already made it before, but yeah, we're going to select a quarter inch ball. So we're going to go by type ball mill, and then we're going to use... Uh, the quarter inch ball, and we could keep the aluminum presets. Okay. And I'm actually going to keep it the aluminum presets, and I'm not going to speed up the cutting feed rate. Um, and that's just because the, the particular ball end mill that we're going to use is going to be kind of long, uh, a little bit longer than I would like uh, for this particular path. Uh, or, you know, for this particular material, I, I should say. Uh, so I'm going to have it go just a little bit slower than I would normally. Um, and again, it's it's already selected that geometry, so we don't need to do anything there because I copy-pasted this path. Um, and we're going to do nothing with the third tab. On the fourth tab, however, we're going to take out the stock to leave. Okay, smoothing and feed optimization are already on. That's good. Um, and then I'm going to make sure I sit down 0 0.04, okay, uh, and why have I chosen that? Uh, it's a very minimal increment. You could make that honestly smaller if you wanted to. The smaller you make it, uh, the more defined the fill it will be on the outside. Uh, and um, yeah, the, the 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 greater the increment, the the rougher it'll it'll sort of be. Um, so yeah, we're going to keep on smoothing and feed optimization, obviously, because that's uh, what we we try and keep those on for all the paths. Um, and then with this guy here, we're going to do nothing. So fifth tab over, do nothing. All right. And now it should make yep, it go down in much finer increments. OK, that looks pretty good. Um, so, yeah, that'll be uh, all that we really need to do uh, for the for the ball mill pass. OK. Um, all right. So let's take a look. Um, so the next one we're going to do is is uh, 
is this geometry here. So we've completed the uh, the rounded geometry. Now we're just going to do these vertical walls, okay? And normally when you see vertical walls, you should also sit, think about doing uh, a, a 2D contour. So let's grab the 2D, 2D contour, okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go back to library and I'm going to grab the number tool one, the quarter inch flat that I have already like, made. Uh, I'm going to select that. And uh, it looks like we got to change the speeds around again. So we're going to keep the same spindle speed, but change the feed rate. Okay, cool. And I'm going to also drop down the lead ins and lead outs a little bit to make things a little smoother. Okay, and I'm going to make the plunge again, bring that back down to 10. Okay, now on the second tab over, we're going to select the bottom edge. Okay, we're going to again make sure the arrow is in the void space. So I'm going to reverse that. Okay, great. Arrow is on the outside now. Uh, third tab over, we're not going to do anything. Fourth tab over, we're going to do quite a lot. This is going to get kind of specific here. Okay, so we're actually going to do, just starting from the top down, not going to mess it with anything on the first three, uh, three spots. Um, but we are going to check off multiple finish passes. We are going to do two. And yet, 25 thou is probably fine. You could change that. Um, 25 thou would work, but you know, just for consistency, my finish pass depth has been 0.02 for, for this for everything. Okay. Um, all right. So great. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to check off multiple depths. Okay. Uh, 0.04 uh, would probably be you know, a reasonable amount for like metals and stuff like that. I would usually do like 50 thou um, for, yeah, most tools, but the thinner the tool, I might not go down that deep. A anyway, for this wood, we're just going to go um, point. Um, yeah, we could do like an eighth of an inch, honestly, 0.125. Okay. Um, and yeah, that'll be pretty quick, actually. And then we're going to do finish only at final depth. All right. And then now... We're going to leave a little bit of stock on the sides. Okay, so we're going to leave some, sorry, we're going to leave some stock on the bottom. We're going to leave none on the sides, and we're going to leave 50 thou on the bottom. Okay, so why have I chose 50 thou? Well, um, that's like usually a pretty good, um, yeah, increment for that. Uh, why won't it let me scroll down to feed optimization? That's kind of annoying. Um, so anyway, we could put the smoothing on. Why wouldn't it let me scroll all the way down? Anyways, so yeah, we're going to leave a little bit of stock, okay, to leave. The reason why we're going to do that, all right, so let's, let's start over. So why can't it go down? Okay, so we're going to edit some stuff here. Okay. Okay, and we're going to do finish only at final depth. We're also going to check off stock to leave. Okay, so we're going to leave stock um, none on the sides, and we're going to leave 50 thou on the bottom. Okay, so we will finish that um, later on, uh, but we're going to do something where um, we finish it on the sides at, at this depth, okay, and then poke through the material all the way on the bottom. Okay, so the goal of this is to keep the material, the, the part, I should say, attached to the bulk material, which is very sturdy, um, for as long as possible. And we're going to do two finishing passes. One of them that, you know, is with this contour that makes sure that the, the sidewalls are, are completely finished. Okay, and then we'll do another one um, that is all the way at final depth that, basically hopefully it just removes the part uh, from, from the material, okay? So we're also gonna check smoothing, okay? Um, and it looks like we can't really select feed optimization. Let's... Why won't it let me go down? Um, that's really annoying.
Okay. Oh, there we go. Feed optimization. I just had to retract that. Okay. Okay, cool. So now we have everything. Wouldn't let me scroll down before. I had to figure that out. <laughs> Anyways, now that we have everything selected on this one, again, we have uh, smoothing and feed optimization checked off. Um, oh, and for feed optimization, we also want to make sure we don't do the internal corners. Okay, so again, uh, we have it do all the corners. Okay, so let's try that. Let's try that one more time. Okay, um, so again, we do finish only a final depth. I do stock to leave. I'm going to make sure that uh, I leave none on the um, uh, none on the sides, and we're going to leave fifty thou on the bottom. And that's because we're going to finish it a second time. Um, you know, we're going to do one finishing pass at second to final depth, and then another one at final depth. Okay. And then, uh, so yeah, it looks like we can't really select smoothing or feed optimization. Um, so, okay, this is where it's going to start. All right, so after we've done the stock to leave, it looks like we can't really select smoothing or feed optimization. Uh, so we could click the smoothing, and why don't we suppress that? Sorry, this is probably just my computer, but I'm going to click off feed optimization, and uh, we'll make sure only inner corners is not selected. Okay, and then the fifth tab over, um, yeah, we're not going to do anything with that. Uh, that all looks pretty good. Okay, so click and check on that. Okay, cool. So as you can see, it goes down uh, to final depth there. This is a freaking disaster. Okay, all right, so stop this. What is it doing? Okay, the next step um, and kind of almost the last thing we're going to be doing um, after we, of course, do the top ledge, uh, we want to route out these vertical, sorry, these vertical surfaces here. Okay, so we're going to do that with a couple of different contours and there's a little bit of nuance, but this is generally um, kind of a handy method uh, if you want to cut, you know, something out that has an exterior contour on the router. Okay, so um, so let's just grab a 2D contour, okay, uh, 2D contour, and we're going to go back to actually using tool number one. Okay, we're going to uh, select that. Uh, we're going to make sure that the feeds go back up to 100 inches a minute on the main feed rate, but we're going to bring it down to 30 on all of our other guys okay and uh the plunge will make uh 10. okay cool so that's what it was for the other one now as far as the geometry goes we're going to grab the outside contour okay um yep and we're just going to make sure the arrows on the outside we're going to go to the third tab over um yep all of our heights look okay um, we're not going to change anything there. Fourth tab over is where it's going to get a little specific. So we're going to go multiple finishing passes. Uh, I'm going to keep 20 thou, 0 0.02. Um, yeah, just because that's what we've been doing for all the other one. Um, we're also going to click off multiple depths. Uh, we could go in 0 0.04 inch increments if we wanted to. Uh, usually with metals, I'll do 0 0.05. Uh, but for this, we're just going to go 0.125. We can you know, make it quite a bit. Um, and I could even go more than that if I really wanted to. Uh, you know, yeah, why don't we go 0.25? That'll just make things go quicker in class, okay? Uh, and we're also going to finish only at final depth. 
Um, and we're going to do a couple more things. We're going to leave stock. Okay. Uh, so we're going to leave none on the sides and we're going to leave 0 0.05 on the bottom. Okay. So I like to do this when I, um, yeah, whenever I am doing like an outside contour, uh, you know, uh, you know, similar to this, um, usually it's helpful to do a finishing pass with it, um, you know, or two finishing passes, let's say one at a depth that's very close to the bottom and then another at a depth that is all the way to the bottom, okay? So the second to last finishing pass, um, the one that I'm preparing right now, um, will do a finishing pass on the outside geometry while the part is still held by the bulk uh, of the like material. Okay, so we're leaving a little bit of uh, material on the bottom, like 50,000, so that when it's doing that finished pass, it's fixtured, you know, better than it would be if uh, if it was just held by the tape. Okay, so sometimes if you do only do one finishing pass all the way at the bottom, um, it'll sort of knock the part loose before you want it to, especially something small like this. And, um, you know, when we use things on the router, we use a double-sided tape and the vacuum spillboard. So really, it's not a whole lot to hold it by. Okay, so that's why I'm preparing for this two-step, which I'll show you with the blue lines in a minute. So hopefully that'll be... Um, uh, more clear. So I also want to put on smoothing and feed optimization. Uh, my computer is being a little bit weird and not letting me scroll all the way down. So we do smoothing and feed optimization, and only uh, and we'll check off the unselect the only inner corners because we wanted to do on the outer corners as well. Um, and then we're going to yep leave the fifth tab uh, all the same. And let's see where we're at. Okay, cool. So as you could see, um, it goes around several times. All right, so uh, let's look at it from a couple different views to see what it's sort of doing here. Uh, let's bring this down a little bit. We don't need it, so, yep, so in there. Okay, yep, so let's go to this face. All right, as you can see, if we look at it from the top, it looks like there are two sort of perimeters that it goes around, okay? And if we go to sort of a more isometric one, we could see that on the bottom, it does the two perimeters, but on all the other depths, it only does the outer one, okay? And that makes sense, right? Because we told it to do, to only finish at final depth, and the final depth we called uh, 50 thou above the bottom. And that's why if we look at it from the side, uh, the blue lines don't go all the way to the bottom. Okay, great. So that looks like it did exactly what we wanted it to do, all right? So now what we're gonna do is just uh, control C and control V. Whoops, not that, yep. We'll do control C, control V, that exact path, okay? The, the lower one, we're gonna go ahead and edit, okay? Um, and we're going to have it do, um, uh, we're gonna, yep, we're gonna unselect multiple depths, we're going to unselect multiple finishing passes. We're going to unselect stock to leave. And yet we're going to leave everything else uh, the same. Okay. So now we're going to check that. And it should do it, yep, at one depth all the way at the bottom. And it should do it on the inner uh, perimeter, you know, from what we saw before. So we could compare both of the paths. So if I click the second to last one, you can see it has the two perimeters. And then if I click the last one, it only has the one perimeter uh, on the on the inner. It, it only does the one inner perimeter, and it goes all the way to the bottom where the previous one did not go all the way to the bottom. Okay, great. Um, so yeah, uh, let's uh, now let's take a look at our path and just make sure everything is okay. So first thing it's going to do is going to do the pocket. Okay, that looks fair enough. Looks like it. Um, yeah, it's going to cut that out. No problem. I don't see any reason why that would be bad. It's not going down too much at a time. Um, yeah, looks fine to me. Horizontal is going to be finishing that bottom surface and the upper surface. That looks good. Um, this uh, contour that goes on the inside. Um, yep, that looks fine. It's finishing that, you know, it, it, it all, all that surface will be roughed before it. So that looks very good. Uh, now it's doing a roughing pass um, here with the... Uh, with the quarter flat, okay, and that's good. It's gonna rough that surface there. And then it's gonna go down to that one, 
Hmm. You know, honestly, something I kind of don't like about this at second glance is the fact that the ball end mill is going to go way down here, um, which I think will be fine with the MDF. But what I think I'm going to do actually is make it, yeah, I'm going to make it so that this path here, the contour 2D contour seven, or at least as it's named for me, it's 2D contour seven, but it's the, you know, it, What it is defined as is the contour that roughs out the outside. I'm actually going to bring this up a little bit, you know, before the finishing pass for that fillet. Okay, so what it's going to do instead is, all right, so let's go from the beginning. It's going to do pocket. It's going to do that horizontal. It's going to do the inside contour. Okay, then the contour around the outside. Okay, then it's going to do... Uh, the roughing contour for the vertical face, okay? And finally, it's going to, uh, uh, sorry, not finally. And then then it's going to finish the fillet and then it's going to go all the way to the bottom. Okay, so I changed it around and moved the uh, moved the the 2D contour that was once the second to last path and I may and I switched it with the 3D contour that was originally going to go right right before it okay and and the um the computer or yeah the the program is going to read from top to bottom here so it'll do the pocket first horizontal then the 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 2D then the 2D the sorry the 3D roughing um and then the uh the the 2d roughing along uh the the vertical wall and then it's going to finish the fillet and then finally finish at final depth all the way on the bottom and cut the and remove the part from the material okay he might say oh how come we need that 3d roughing contour well that 3d roughing contour as you can see if we look at it from the top is actually going to do some work in roughing the fillet out where as the uh the the 2d contour below it uh sorry um yeah the the 2d contour below it will only sort of uh remove uh from the will only rough the vertical uh sides okay so um so great okay cool so it looks like we have our our whole path and what we could actually do now is perform a stock simulation all right so i can uh press play here Oh, that did it really, really fast. Let's slow it down a little bit so I can uh, do a number of things. Well, I can see how it finishes and it looks pretty good. Uh, and I can see all my paths represented with all the different colors. But let's move it down a little bit and let's press play. Yep, I wanna go from the beginning. So anyways, it's gonna do the inside geometry. Okay, cool. It's roughing it, now it's gonna finish the top with a horizontal. Okay, great. Now it's going to finish the inside cavity with a horizontal. Now it's going to come with that uh, 2D contour and rough that out, er, and, and finish that. Now it's going to do that uh, 3D contour that roughs the fillet. Doesn't do that much, but it's going to be fine. Okay, now it's going to, this is the uh, 2D contour that roughs the outside. Okay, and sort of prepares the um for for the ball end mill now the ball end mill is going to come and it's going to fully finish uh the the edges uh of where the fillet is okay that looks pretty good all right great cool Awesome. Sweet. And um, yeah, we already double checked a lot of things with the code. It doesn't look like anything goes down. Uh, what I wouldn't or goes down too much, you know, per depth. Um, obviously, we only use two tools, so we don't have very many speeds and feeds to uh, program. Um, but yeah, that that overall looks fine. Um, I you I always suggest to double check, you know, all the the individual paths that you've made. Again, you know, it's really easy to miss a very small thing. You know, I missed the smooth optimiz uh, the feeding and smooth uh, sorry feed optimization and smoothing, which I usually like to keep on. Um, so yeah, just make sure all, all the paths uh, have all the things they need. And that should be it for, for, the, for the CNC mini part. In this portion of the video, we're going to go over how to machine um, the CNC mill part. Okay, so I gave you another example of how to machine 
uh, on the, um, the 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 CNC router mini part, or the, yeah, I call it the CNC mini part. Um, but we're going to tackle this one today. Um, so the first thing I want to do is sort of identify the type of machining we want to do. So I've specifically made it so that this part would have like these uh, inclusions or, or something quite similar on, on your version. Um, so, but what I'm going to do here is prepare this to be machined with, uh, with tabs. Okay, I'm going to show you a method of tabbing um, that I think is helpful because it's kind of really specific and allows you to put tabs exactly where you need it. If you use Fusion, um, which is, again, very similar to HSM Works, but one of the really big things that it does differently is in, it, in, um, in HSM Works, you cannot do tabs, you know, um, you know, within the machining portion. But uh, you know, in, in Fusion, it allows you to make tabs in the in machining. But now I, I can sort of place these tabs exactly where I want and I can make them whatever shape I want. So I feel it's worthwhile to sort of show you how all that works. Okay, so what do I mean by tabbing? Basically, we're going to create a superstructure around the part and then connect that like kind of frame uh, to the uh, to the part itself with uh, with tabs. OK, uh, and it's going to allow the part to be held in there and allow us to do, uh, you know, all these outside contours without having to have multiple machining setups. OK, so, you know, let's say I got a piece of material that was exactly as wide as this part here. Um, you know, I could grab it on one side and, and mill this pocket and then grab it from another side and mill this pocket and this pocket and, and so on. Um, but, you know, since I had it, if I had it in the vise, I would, you know, whatever direction I had it in there, I would... Um, you know, not be able to cut that, uh, the, the sort of the, the contour that like touches it. Okay. Um, and we also want the tops and bottoms and all sides to be machined relatively well, uh, additionally. Okay. Um, so, so that's what we're going to do. Um, so, okay. First thing we want to do, I'm going to go onto the bottom plane here and I'm going to create a sketch. OK, so I've created a sketch on the bottom plane. And now what I'm going to do is do an offset entities. OK, so now I'm thinking about my offset dimension uh, and, you know, the fact that I want a specific type or size of end mill to sort of fit in that channel. OK, so I'm going to make it 0.3. Eh, why don't I just make it 0.4? Yep, I can make that 0.4 wide. And as you can see, it's made it like a, a basically a box. OK, um, that should be good enough for us. That'll be yeah, that'll be fine for, for what we wanted to do. And I guess if it was 0.4, I could also use a 3 8 end mill if I wanted to. Um, I wouldn't want to go too much bigger than this because I don't want to inadvertently cut into um, cut into my part. OK, so we'll click check on that. All right, great. So now I've created this square. OK, and what I'm going to do next is I'm going to create another square that represents my stock contours and we'll double check things and make sure that um, the inner square is dimensioned properly. OK, so I'm going to do a center rectangle and we're going to try and make it, you know what I'm going to do first? Instead of the center rectangle, we're just going to do a center line and I'm going to grab the midpoint of the top line of this of the rectangle and go down to the bottom one, make sure we're nice and vertical. Cool. Now we'll have this uh, fully defined sketch entity that has uh, a center point. So we'll be able to use our center point rectangle from there. And let's make it as big as we need to. Okay, so now I bought material that is four inches wide, um, it, but it is like a certain length. So yeah, we'll do four inches, um, but, but it is, um, rather long. So if I needed to, I could have it be a little bit longer than four inches on the other dimension, the, but the other one must be four inches. Ah, looks like it's going to be fine being even a little bit less than four inches, but I'm going to just make it an equal sided guy. There we go. And, um, and that should be good. Okay. So now we're going to create line geometry that's going to represent, um, uh, what, where our, um, that's going to represent where our tabs are. Okay. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to make some lines. Okay. So I want a tab. Yeah. I want a tab going from this corner out to there. Okay. So why have I chosen to go horizontal to, to that portion? Although I could have gone to, you know, I, I could have gone uh, vertical, you know, to that other edge. 
Um, the reason I'm going horizontal is because I don't want these tabs to be on any of the like interfacing surfaces. Okay, so I don't like, so for instance, the tab is gonna be created off to this side and it's largely going to not affect this bottom surface there, which is going to touch another part. Okay, so I, I wanna make sure that the tabs stay well away um, from the surfaces that, um, that it's going to interact with. So I'm gonna keep going and do uh, two more tabs, one to this side, and I'm just gonna be lazy and not pick up my pencil and go over like that vertically, or sorry, horizontally, and I will delete that sketch entity I just made because I don't need it. Okay, uh, oh, shoot, made that one on <laughs> the wrong side. Let's go, let's try that again. I guess we could go to the inner ones, but uh, I feel like it's gonna hold it a little bit more securely if we go to the outer edges. Okay, cool. So now, um, that is good. Okay, so we we could change our um, offset dimension on the fly if we really wanted to, um, and that would you know help things, or that would you know that that could shrink or enlarge the uh, sort of inner square that we see there. Um, but I think that's going to work just fine. All right, uh, let's move my face here so that I can exit the sketch. So exiting the sketch. Now we're going to create a series of extrusions. Um, so the first extrusion we're going to make. Um, is going to be a boss extrude. Okay, I'm going to make sure I do the correct boundary. We're going to flip it and we're going to make it 0.5, which is what the thickness of the um, the material is. So I made it 0.5 there and I, yep, we're flush with the top of the material. So that's good. Okay, so now uh, clicking check on that. Uh, annoyingly, I have to do it kind of separately. Uh, let's show my sketch once more. It, it hides the sketch as you I'm sure know after you've made something out of it. But now we're gonna make uh, thin features for those, for those guys. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna go here, let's click that. Okay, cool, it knows what we wanna do already. Um, and you'll see what happens here, but when you, when you click all these guys here, which I'm gonna do. Oops, not that. Yeah, so you see how one of them goes underneath and the other one goes on top? Well, let's also change the direction. But yeah, one of them kinda, that looks like it's correct and that one doesn't. Um, so you kinda have to annoyingly do this in two. Um, so I could do these opposite ones. Yeah, those look fine. Um, I'm gonna make it, um, I'm gonna only make it go up point, uh, I could probably make it an eighth of an inch, but I'll make it a quarter of an inch, 0.25. Uh, and the thickness is 0.1. Yeah, I mean, th that, that should be just fine. That should be enough to hold it uh, as it's being cut, especially if I have four of them. So clicking check on that one. Okay, now what I'm going to do is, um, is do the other ones too. So here we go. Uh, I'll just do the same exact thing again, clicking that there. And changing there and oh, gotta go back to that box and select the other one. There we go. And now I can flip the offset. There we go. And now they're both on the correct side that I want them to be. Okay. And we're going up 0.25 and the thickness of the uh, of, of the thin feature is 0.1. So that's good. Awesome. So now we have all of our tabs. Okay. Um, and, and that that would actually um, be enough for us to machine. But um, what what I want you to realize when you uh, machine anything um, with an end mill, I guess more specifically, I, wire EDM is sort of a different story, although you run into internal radiuses there too. But anytime you cut like an internal corner, it will not be a 90 degree sharp corner like that. Okay, it'll always be rounded. Uh, so I like to accurately portray that if I if I can. Um, so we're gonna go here and we're gonna go do that. And I'm gonna make this 0.125 because that's the end mill radius we plan to use. And I'm just gonna plop that at all of the radiuses uh, that, that are gonna be, you know, milled. Okay, there we go. Um, and outside radiuses, so like this one doesn't have to be rounded because an end mill can go around a corner and create a uh, a hard edge, but um, not an internal corner.
Okay, I'm going to do all these ones as well. I'm going to speed this up in the video. I guess I'll have to learn how to use that. Speed up tool. Okay, there we go. And one last one. Okay, does that look pretty good? Oh, missed one. There. Okay, cool. So we have all our radiuses all done and dusted. Okay, cool. So now, okay, now we can start, uh, we could actually start doing stuff. All right. Um, okay. So let's go on over to our fourth uh, tab over, which is for the camming paths. Okay. Actually, you know what we're going to do? Um, we actually have to do one thing before that. We need to make a coordinate system. So the last part was done on the router, um, which um, has like a kind of different philosophy when it comes to making your coordinate system. I usually like to make the coordinate system on the bottom lower left-hand corner. Lower left-hand corner because it's kind of closer to you as you stand and operate the machine. And um, on the bottom because the spillboard is, is where all parts will sit normally. Um, but when I'm putting it in the CNC mill, which is what I'm going to use to cut this out, um, it won't, um, you know, it won't have a spillboard to sit on. So, um, so basically, in, because it doesn't have a spillboard to sit on, because not all parts will be sitting at the same height, I put the coordinate system on the top, okay, so that I could touch tools off on the top of the material. It's much harder to touch a tool off on the bottom of a material. Um, yeah, that not even sure a good way to really even do that. Um, you know, if you don't have like a spillboard or something to touch off of that the material sits on. Um, so yeah, because this will be sitting up in the parallels in the vise. So coordinate system, we're going to go to features, reference geometry, coordinate system, and we're going to put it up here on the stock. Do, 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 come on, select the corner. There we go. X will go this way. Uh, flip that around and Y will go this way, just making sure that the edges are selected. I like to make sure the edges are selected when I do a coordinate system. Anyways, so that becomes our coordinate system and, and that's that's all we really need to do there. Now, um, now we could go to CAM and we can create the job, okay? Um, and we could keep it all to like no additional stock. That'll be just fine with this one. I don't... Um, I'm not requiring you guys to do any milling on the top surface apart from the engraving, but you don't really need to create extra stock in that direction to like prepare it for that. So, um, but anyway, um, yeah, um, we're just going to make sure that it's using coordinate system one. Okay. It looks like it is. And you know, the triad is selected on our coordinate system. So that should be good. And we're doing milling, um, no additional stock. Yeah. Relative box size all looking pretty good. Okay, so cool, we've created our job. Let's go over to our camming uh, uh, tree view thing. Um, okay, so now a couple of things we, we we're gonna wanna do. Um, what I wanna do first, I, I guess the first thing that I'm gonna have the path do will be um, will be to to do an engrave on on the on my name and the emoji thing I put there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab uh, the 2D milling, I'm going to do a 2D engrave, okay? And first thing we'll do, like like in the other paths that I've told, I've told you, uh, I've talked to you about, we're going to go to library, and um, we're going to go, I'm actually going to delete these tools so that I can show you guys where they are found. Yes, uh, and delete. Okay, yes. Okay, so we're going to try and just use two tools for this. I think it'll be relatively easy to do that. Um, but I'm going to go here. I'm going to go to a by type. I'm going to use um, a, a chamfer mill. Okay. And I'm going to go down here. As you can see, there really aren't that many uh, chamfer mills like available. Okay. Um, and I don't really know why they have it like that, um, but we're going to change things. And um, yeah, we're, we're just going to make sure that we use whichever chamfer tool. Uh, we're, we're going to change the chamfer tool and we're going to use whichever one we're, we're going to program it to be whichever one that that like we have or at least pretty close to it and it should work just fine okay so again um i'll select one of the english unit ones okay so we're, we'll, we're going to select that you need to annoyingly select it before you can modify it so after we select it we're going to go back into library 
Okay, I'm going to change some things about this tool. So we're going to go ahead and edit it. Okay, and I'm going to change, first of all, let's change some of the stuff. I'm going to make it tool two, make sure it's doing the length offset and the diameter offset cutter. Okay, um, what matters most is the tip diameter. So we're going to make that 0. 0.0001, make it like just very, very small. Um, and the chamfer mill we have will come to an absolute point. I don't know what like the, the tool nose radius is like really specified, um, but we're going to make this 0. 0.25 as well. Okay, and I guess we don't really need to change the overall length. Um, yeah, that that all should be fine. Additionally, yeah, that that's that's that should all be fine. Um, so yeah, and it's a sixty degree one. Um, if we have a ninety, it might be slightly different, but um, yeah, we could change that degree to whatever we want to. Uh, I don't see it being any issue. Whatever angle you have in there, um, it'll still like cut the name out and the emoji. So. Um, you know, I, I think either will largely be fine. I, I think it'll might maybe cut a little bit deeper if I have, uh, you know, a, a larger or smaller angle on it. Um, okay. So anyways, chamfer mill, uh, I'm not going to mess with anything else in terms of uh, the shaft or, or anything like that. So we're going to click OK on that. Uh, yeah. So we're going to we're going to change feeds and speeds in the other window. Uh, so I'm going to select that uh, instead of 92 inches a minute. Let's bring that down to like. 30. Um, the, tool, the tool tip is quite small. Um, and we're going to make these also like 20, the lead in, lead out stuff. Yeah, because the, the tool tip is really small and it's kind of easy to break. Um, so doing 20 on all those. And I might even slow it down um, a little bit more than that if I want to. And we could, yeah, eight eight thousand is fine. Oh, yeah, you know what? Well, I'm gonna make them all twenty, uh, not ten, twenty. Uh, it'll take a little bit longer, but again, I want to preserve my tool tip, uh, and make sure it doesn't break. Okay, so after our tool has been selected and we've selected all the speeds and feeds, um, we can now go about selecting our contours. Uh, so it's really specific in what it wants us to do here, but it wants us to do only the outer, or sorry, the yeah, the the top edges. Okay, it won't work with the bottom edges or even the bottom faces. Uh, so you got to select the top edges, and I'll speed this up by editing it out. But I want to get all these edges. Okay, we also do it on the emoji here. I'll get the inner and outer edges there. All right, cool. So we've selected all of our edges. Third tab over, we're not going to do anything. Fourth tab over, not going to do anything. And fifth tab over, again, not going to do anything. This doesn't really require any finishing passes or, or anything fancy like that. Let's see how this turns out. Okay, looks like it's going a little bit below the surface in the poop emoji. Um, it looks like everything is perfect on the Tony Bohm text. Okay, uh, so let's see what we could do about making that look a little bit better. Um, so we're going to edit that. And what I'm actually going to do is edit the third tab over and make it from the bottom from selection. I'm going to select that bottom face. Okay, there we go. So that looks a little bit better and it's not going to go lower than I want it to. Uh, let's take a look at how that one looks. Yeah, that also looks uh, fine as it did before. Cool. So we made it so that the cutter wouldn't go too deep. So I couldn't see any of the blue lines, but I sort of knew that they were like underneath the part surface. And I didn't want that. I just want the tip of the tool to go right where right where the bottom face is and, and no deeper. Okay, cool. So with that, we did the engrave. Now what we want to do is attempt to clear... Um, all of the surfaces um, underneath, uh, sorry, around around our part there. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. We're going to do a pocket clearing. Okay, cool. We're going to use a 3D pocket here. Um, so we're going to do pocket clearing. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and select all these bottom edges like that. Okay. Uh, to paint a picture of what uh, we wanted to do. Okay, um, so yep, we're selecting all those. I should select a different tool. Sorry, I should do that. So first tab over, let's select our tool. So we're gonna go by type, flat mill, 
And we're just going to keep with the presets for the quarter flat with aluminum because uh, that's what we're going to be cutting this out of. Okay, cool. Um, so 60, 60, 60, 30, that should all be just fine. Um, I'm going to go here, second tab over. Uh, we have our our boundaries already selected, so that's good. Sorry, I jumped the gun a little bit. This tab, um, we're going to leave exactly where it is for now. Uh, third tab over. I'm going to go step. I'm going to step down with 0 0.05, um, and we're going to use a. Um, um, yeah, we're not going to finish this path. Um, so yeah, we're going to leave stock. We're going to leave. 0.2 on the sides, and then I'm, I'm just going to leave zero on the bottom. Although it doesn't really matter. I could leave a little bit on the bottom, I guess. The, the amount that it, it had there was like 0.1 millimeter, so it's very little. Um, there we go. Next, I'm going to keep a helix on. I'm going to I'm going to want the helix when I'm cutting into aluminum, and lead in and lead out should all be just fine. I've given myself enough room uh, so that it, it should be able to lead in and lead out uh, no problem. OK, so let's see what that pocket wants to do. OK, great. So um, you can see the pocket goes over these uh, these tabs that we've made, um, which is what we're going to want it to do. Um, and yeah, that looks like it's going to cut it out just fine. So that's going to be fine for our roughing pass. OK, now what we're going to do next is we're going to attempt to finish it um, in like a couple of different ways. All right, so first of all, we're going to need a contour that goes all the way around it, sort of on top of the tabs. Okay, so how do we get it to do that? Um, basically, the best way to do it probably is to make a sketch line that the contour can follow along. So I'm going to go onto the top surface of the tab. I'm going to click sketch. So I'm sketching on the top surface of this tab. Um, and so now what I'm going to do is, yeah, I can... So I can do convert entities. Well, I don't want to do convert entities for that. I can do convert entities for that guy. I could go ahead and delete this one that I made inadvertently because um, I don't need it. Uh, let's try and highlight it and delete it. There we go. And we got rid of that. Okay, cool. So we've deleted that now. And I think I should be able to also delete that little guy there too. Okay, cool. So now we've created a um, an outline of our part at that level. Okay, so now what we could do is we could use that. I'm going to exit this sketch here, um, and we're going to go back to our cam tab. Um, and now we can go ahead and make a 2D contour, okay, um, that will finish it all the way around um, at on that sketch line. Okay, so we're going to keep our quarter flat. I'm going to go over a second tab over. I'm going to select that. Uh, let's go reverse. Can I do a select chain? There we go. So it selected the whole chain, and I'm going to hit reverse there. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, making sure that the arrow is on the outside. Uh, that's what I want. Um, Third tab over, I'm not going to do anything there. And I'm not also not going to do anything on the fourth tab. And we'll keep a lead in and lead out um, for the uh, for the fifth tab over. And I'm not going to ramp or do anything fancy like that at all. Okay. Um, so cool. So as you can see, it's going around at that depth. Um, the reason I'm doing that is because it's going to leave 0.2 of an inch on the sides here. And so it's good to finish it all the way around, you know, uh, you know, in one cut so that you could get rid of the what would be like kind of little nubs that stick out like above the tabs. Um, and then what I'm going to do is uh, the final thing I'm going to do is a contour all the way around in all of those individual like kind of channels. OK, um, so, yep, let's do another 2D contour. And we're going to go select that one, reverse, select that one, uh, reverse. And there we go. We're going to do this one. And this one. And we got to reverse that one too. Cool. So awesome. All the arrows are, are in the void spaces. And that's what we want. And third tab over, we're not going to do anything. Fourth tab over. Again, not going to do anything. Fifth tab over. Yeah, not going to do anything at all either. Okay, cool. So that should finish the inside of the part there. So uh, something I guess I didn't or might have not showed you so much uh, with the other one, but we could simulate this one. So let's do a stock simulation. And um, 
There we go. It's going to cut my name out. There we go. Cool. Now it's going to do the emoji. All right, that looks pretty good. Uh, it looks like it missed those little geometries, but I'm okay with that. It looks like it, it looks like a poop emoji. It looks fine. <laughs> so, anyways, now it's gonna do the outside perimeter. And as you can see, it's leaving a little bit of stock. You can see the like tiny little increment there that it's like leaving. Cool, it's like cutting out its pocket now. All right, and I can see that. Total machining time for this is going to be about eight minutes. And yeah, that's that's fine for a part this size. That's okay. Um if it was take it, yeah, if it was taking a little bit longer, I could ramp the feed rates up, but I wouldn't go like too much higher if I was if I, you know, was just using a high speed quarter inch end mill. If I was using a um a carbide end mill, then I could increase my feed rates, but I don't exactly know um, you know. At this point, which which ML I have, uh, if I'm just making the program, I could speed it up if I uh, if I really wanted to. Cool. I'm going to speed this up so that it happens a little quicker. This is all just most of this is going to be this pocket. Cool. It clears that channel. And that one too, and finally that one. There we go. That's doing the first contour, second contour, and we are done. Okay, cool. So, um, so yeah, that that all looks great. Um, and yeah, so what we were trying to avoid. So, what what I was trying to explain before, but maybe didn't do a great job explaining. The reason why we did that sort of finishing contour on the like mid plane is to avoid those. So if you see those like little nubs that like sort of get left as a result, that's because I didn't finish the outside on that level. Okay. So, and then that's helpful to get like a nice flat edge here. So what you'll do after this is you'll take this over to the bandsaw and you'll cut out the tabs and then you could use uh, the, the manual mill and you could cut um, a straight um, edge along there. Um, and along there to sort of get rid of your tab marks. Okay, so um, that is about it. Um, and, and also, well, yeah, you also need to put the holes in on the tops and the bottoms, uh, which we couldn't do with this tool path, especially, you know, because it's a, uh, a, a three axis mill. Okay, um, so that basically concludes um, your CNC video. Uh, thanks for watching. Appreciate it.